Hello, this is David Coyle again, and thank you for joining me for another uh, few minutes known as Real Life Worth Living. I want us to begin this time by looking at John chapter 12. Now, John 12 is one of those transitional times between the regular ministry and teaching of Jesus Christ, the performing of miracles, the disclosing of the Word of God, and it brings us to that place where he is about to enter into the very last week of his life on earth. He uh, has just arrived for the feast in Jerusalem before the Passover, and his disciples are with him. And as is his custom, he is gathered with his disciples in order to rest up before they uh, uh, go and uh, address the multitudes of people and teach them the word of God and give to them an understanding of sorts of what is about to take place in this week and at the end of this week. This is the time when Jesus has triumphantly entered into the city of Jerusalem as a great teacher of God, as a wonderful servant of God, as a truth teller, as a miracle man, uh, as a, uh, a teacher who, who taught with authority greater than any other teacher than anybody on earth had ever heard. And there were those who were coming to him privately in order to, uh, to meet with him, to talk with him, to discuss with him, uh, to seek those answers that Jesus himself was, uh, could supply and was the only one who could supply because he was the only one who knew the answers because he spoke for God. There were those who understood these things, but did not necessarily understand that he was to be Messiah, that he was to be the, uh, the representation of God on earth, and that he was the only begotten Son of God, that he was more than a man. Yes, he was fully man, but it was also at the same time he was completely man fully God. He is what theologians refer to as the theanthropic man, the God-man. And as such, uh, he knew things that others couldn't know. He knew things that only God could know because after all, being fully man and fully God, he is God. In verse 20, it tells us that there were certain Greeks among them that came to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of, Beth of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired of him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Now, Jesus is about to give them an answer. And their answer may, or his answer may or may not have been confusing to them. They have heard it many, many, many times, especially in these latter days, coming up to the time of his passion. He was describing things for them again. There is a purpose for them being here. There is a purpose for Jesus uh, being received as he was, as he rode into Jerusalem upon the foal of an ass. There is a reason why, there is a purpose for people coming to seek him out to look for answers. But the purpose goes beyond just giving them an understanding of what God is doing in life and in history at this particular time, there is a purpose that goes way beyond everything he has ever done up to this point. 
and covers not only future days and future years, but eternity. And that purpose is to give everlasting life to those who would seek it. And his methodology for that purpose is found in the description from nature of a corn of wheat, a grain of wheat, a wheat seed being sown in the ground and watered, and that one wheat seed apparently uh, giving itself in death produces life. Now that particular uh, grain of wheat no longer, it ceases to exist. But out of its place comes the, uh, comes the stalk that is able to produce then life that keeps on producing more and more and more and more and more. And each one of those uh, seeds of wheat that is produced out of it is also capable of producing more wheat. Jesus then is that grain of wheat that is to be sown and die. Out of him, then, comes the ever-flowing production of life through faith, where others then become as he is. Um, those who have the message that he is bringing, who have the capability of receiving a life and of giving a life, on an ongoing basis and bringing forth much fruit. And he says, he that loveth his life will lose it, in verse 25. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. In other words, if you're going to clutch and grasp at life in this world, you're going to have life, but this life is all you'll have. You won't have life in eternity. You won't have the life that Christ came to give you. You won't have everlasting life with God. You will not be a child of God. You will not be in the kingdom of God. You will not be a servant of God. You will be lost and cast into the fire that is eternal. But if any man serve me, let him follow me. Anyone then who wants to be worthy of the life that Jesus Christ is giving, the worthiness there is uh, determined by Christ and not by you. None of us is worthy in himself and of himself to receive everlasting life, but Christ is worthy to give it and to pronounce us worthy of receiving it because will come to him, will we'll, uh, uh, take the faith that God has given us, place it in him, and come to know him as Savior. Well, if we're going to do that, it only makes sense then that we would serve him, that we would take that life in Christ and invest it to serve him. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be, shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. You want to receive the kind of honor in this life that uh, a child of God is deserving of? Well, he is deserving of it only by his service to the Lord Jesus Christ, only by his commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ to follow him, to serve him, to live life in the manner that Jesus Christ meant for him to live it. That's what we're told here in these verses. That is the purpose for which Jesus Christ came and died and offered himself a ransom for many. That is the purpose for which we are to believe the Greeks came and sought after him. And that is the purpose for which people still seek him and still find an answer and still find a reward in faith in the living Christ. Our Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the willingness of Jesus Christ to offer himself 
as the sacrifice that produces life eternal for each one of us and those who would come after us and receive the message that we are faithful to give. We thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake alone. Amen.